welcome to today's episode of Conversations with Karen and Kat. I'm Karen Scott Green. And I'm Kat Hardrick. And we are here today with Dr. Tamika Ray Head. She is the founder and director of Pink Stem Incorporated. That's right. That's right. And aren't you a veteran? Yes, ma'am. Air Force veteran. Woo woo. All right. Woo woo. We love all of that. Now, Dr. Is it Ray Head or just had to say Dr. Head? Dr. Head is fine. <laughs> so, Dr. Dr. Head, first you have to tell us what is Pink Stem Incorporated and how did how what was your why for starting Pink Stem Incorporated? Yes, um, thank you for that. And thank you all for having me here on the show. Uh, Pink Stem was started while I was in school. It was actually my um, project that I had to write towards my dissertation. And my professor told me to create a topic that was near and dear to my heart. At that time, I was working on my education specialist degree. I was a teacher and I knew that I wanted to work with girls, but I wasn't sure exactly uh, what I wanted to do as far as mentorship with them. Mm -hmm. And so I started to do research. And then I saw that um, since I was a science and a math teacher, there weren't many girls, especially girls of color in our mm -hmm. fields or at the time back in 2011, 2012 that were choosing these careers. And so um, I kind of wove what my job was as a teacher, math and science teacher, to the research topic saying that we needed more for the future. And then I um, came up with the STEM from, it wasn't really a buzzword back then. And I created Pink STEM and it was actually just a part of my research paper. And then it eventually turned into a nonprofit and a now for-profit leg as well. So how, when did you create Pink STEM? So I created it in 2012. Um, and then I just finished all my trademarking and everything for um, the name in 2019 during the pandemic. And that has been a roller coaster in itself, <laughs> protecting my mark. <laughs> yeah. really? is, is that a thing like to protect your brand? I know Starbucks, they, they'll get you if it's Star Chucks or something like that. So how was that process to get it? protected when you mentioned it? Yes, it was stressful because I, um, because STEM became popular relatively overnight. Um, mm -hmm. When I first created Pink STEM, uh, people thought that we were um, STEM cell research and it really oh. wasn't known. So it really took a lot for me to explain what STEM was the first five or six years. And mm -hmm. then when it became a popular buzzword, then I would see companies having events that were pink STEM event. And then wow. um, in North Carolina, a young lady was hosting pink STEM events and it got confused with mine. And wow. they were trying to ask us about donations. And I knew that it wasn't my company that was doing it. So that's when I knew it was time to protect my company. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, and I trademarked the name. And now, you know, whenever I see someone with the pink stem, I just reach out to them. You know, me and my attorney, we reach out to them and just like, that's, that's right, cease and desist. So we've done a few of those actually. And, um, but you know, mo relative, most people don't see any harm in it. And most people will stop once you send that cease and desist. Can you tell our viewers what your pink stem stands for? So we can be clear that it's not stem cell. <laughs> yes, ma'am, Miss Cat. It is um, pink for the color, and I did choose it for the girls at the time. And um, the STEM is the science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And I do want to elaborate on that a little more if I have a moment. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, as we all know, during the pandemic, so much with injustice came out, so much mm -hmm. with in, with inequalities. Mm -hmm. And I did hear that in your first, um, when I was listening to your first podcast message, it was just so much that we've already been experiencing it, but now it was brought to the public knowledge and the light was shown, shined on it because we were all at homes in front of our computer and yeah. our televisions. And yeah. so um, we kind of came across an issue where, Okay, so with girls now, we have different types of girls that we have to recognize and be sensitive to. We have to be all inclusive. So we yeah. really, we really came into a lot because is it natural born girl? Is it a girl that, um, is it a girl that she identifies as a girl? And we know, especially as black women, we have 
so many barriers against us. So we want equal rights for all of us. Uh, so right. the parental support system is for our girls. Um, we don't we don't go into uh, as far as what preferences are. We don't we don't mm -hmm. dive into any of that because we want to support girls. So that's how mm -hmm. we focus where our company where we started and where we are now. So your organization is, is inclusive of all young persons who either identify or present as female. Would, would that be correct? Yes. Yeah, so what with our organization, we we just say pink stem is girls, but we have an amazing men, which is a pink stem company. So uh, we, we have where is, you know, all students. And so both all are encompassed under our pink stem umbrella, the same 501 C3. Mm -hmm. And we can work with students regardless of gender that way, because we have had parents that don't want to bring their children because of the color pink or other issues oh. like that. So we just want to make sure that it's, we really just want to help children, but we do have a special place in our heart for girls and especially for minority girls. Okay. What's the age group? So we're K through 12 actually. And okay. over the years, um, we started off with just middle school and then our middle school students started to graduate high school and then college. And then now that was when our um, pink engineering was our workforce development firm. That was when we started working with our government agencies and some of our other partners so we can start to help them get jobs. So as oh, wow. Pink STEM evolved, we started to evolve to just kind of grow with our girls. Mm -hmm. And um, when I say kindergarten, we have some schools that request us to work with their pre-K students. So we're all, a, we're all a group of educators. We just go in with the um, Georgia standards and we work whatever standards are based on that age group and we support whichever group. So we're really all inclusive. So you, you, your program primarily runs in the schools or do you have an offsite where you work with, with, uh, with girls as well? So I have an offsite. Um, we started in Henry County in Locust Grove, Georgia, mm -hmm. and we started our facility there. And during the pandemic, I had to start working with students online. So we okay. closed our facility in Henry County and um, my husband and I, we moved back to Warner Robins where he is from. Mm -hmm. And so we opened up a facility here, but here at our facility, we mainly do tutoring. We don't do the girls um, okay. activities like we did in Henry County. We just do tutoring. But as far as like the activities that we do for girls, we go into schools, we go into, we have private schools and we go to nonprofits like Tuskegee Airmen. We just did a session with them last week. Mm -hmm. uh, so we work with other nonprofits and it's, it works better for us to go to our students, but we do have a facility here. Okay. What are some of the, what are some of the activities and programs that you offer the young people? So we, we started to work backwards. So we go to our corporate sponsors, like we have Kimley Horn, we have NASA, we have mm -hmm. uh, DPR, which is a construction firm. Southwire, we have different firms and we have um, Southern Gas Company. So we work oh, with- Y'all got, got deep got heavy hitters, don't <laughs> you? You ain't playing. Yes, ma'am. Oh, and, and I can't I can't miss uh, Robbins Air Force Base. They are an in, uh, integral part of our success. So we work with their engineers to say, if you had these skills as a child, what would help you choose your career as an engineer? Mm -hmm. And so they, the, the engineers actually help us build the curriculum. Um, and us as teachers, we put the fun, we put the standards, the Georgia State standards, and the engineers tell us exactly which skills it would go into. So like, for instance, um, I taught physics. So um, if I have an activity where we have electronics or electrical engineering, whatever physics standards would work for that, I would connect that with the engineers that we work with. Okay. I just want to, I just want to give a little shout out. Did my oh. sister just say she teach physics? Oh, oh man, Dr. Tamika. Well, I don't, oh, teach, I don't teach it anymore. <laughs> now, it made my head hurt. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I, when, I, when I did physics and honors chemistry, those mm -hmm. were, those when, it, when you started to put math and science together, that was that was really the core value of why 
I knew that we needed support. We need our yeah. girls need mentors. They need someone yeah. that can they can call and just be honest and transparent that mm -hmm. I'm not having a good day. Right. <laughs> and right. so we, we try to find engineers that are of women and that look like our young girls, but not mm -hmm. always we find them. So yeah. that's why we know there's so much work to be done. Absolutely. Um, and then thinking of that, have you ever partnered with Nesby? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have Kennesaw Nesby and we have Georgia Tech Nesby. Um, okay. we have Can we break down the acronym first? And then she, then we'll <laughs> Look, I'm all <laughs> oh, in that's, that's the I National like Society. Uh, yes, the National Society of Black Engineers. And at Georgia Tech, they're the Georgia Tech Society of Black Engineers. And we actually did our first STEAM programs with them for mm -hmm. two years, about seven years ago. And currently, the Nesby, um, we don't work directly with the Nesby there. We have a group called Caterpillar's Promise. And they are a group of Black engineers that focus on social, injust social justice mm -hmm. as well as engineering concepts. And we partner directly with them to help them with sponsorships, funding, activities. But they got it going on. And the young lady that started the program, she was actually a high school student. And now she's an engineer for Delta. So what? she's been working with us for the last nine, 10 years. Get out and of here. I, I just have to put a little plug in. I am a Georgia Tech alum. I'm oh, yes, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> Look at all this power Look at all this power Yes, ma'am. But yeah. so you know, when you you say that you align the curriculum with the Georgia standards, in reviewing the Georgia standards, do you find that it's lacking for what you need and want to do? Not that it's lacking. I think it's just building those connections okay. uh, because I've learned that we have to put more real world to reach some of our children. Some of our children mm -hmm. are exposed to different things. It may be the same as what they see on their um, SAT. Like this, for instance, if they have a question on their SAT, um, they may say that one word means one thing versus another. So what we, we do is we use our language. We, we use cultural references to break down and to debunk okay. the difficult, you know, concepts. And once we work with that, because we all, you know, we all have the same, not the same, but we all have similar backgrounds that we can pull from. And so that's mm -hmm. how we help our younger people by, especially when it comes to like the Georgia standards. It's not that it's lacking. It's just that we can um, kind of break it down to um, understand for our students. Okay. I, and I only say that because I've seen some of the work you know, when my student, when my kids were like in, in school and, mm -hmm. and I would look at some of the work they were doing and I was like, oh, this is what you're doing. It just, the I, I, it, I felt like my schoolwork when I was in K through 12 was more rigorous than what I'm seeing in Georgia. I went, mm -hmm. I, I went to school in Florida. Okay. And so and I, I just had a con I don't know. I don't know if other parents feel the same, but it, it just didn't feel very rigorous. Like there wasn't a lot of critical thinking in mm. the curriculum. I would add too that when my son went to GSMST in the South, there was mm. a huge difference in his curriculum, you know, because he wanted to be a, a physicist as well. So mm. astrophysicist and stuff. So it's it is a huge difference, in my opinion as a parent to see just in, in, in Gwinnett itself, the yeah. difference between that school yeah. and some things that I feel like I'm, I can appreciate more in advance for, for those children who are advanced, but I still feel like there should still be a consistent- Like why isn't that level. curriculum available to all high school Thank students? Thank you. Like why, why, do they have to, why do they have to get into a lottery to be okay. able to go to GSM? GMST, right? Like, why? Because I, I, I feel like I feel like you're missing so many good kids that are, and they need that somebody to make the information jump mm -hmm. off the page. You know, I didn't meet somebody. Well, I met somebody like that in high school, right. and then when I got to college, and but all those years in between, not having somebody to kind of connect with you with all that science and math. You know, I'm glad you guys are out there. 
Yes. Yes. And I really appreciate that. And and uh, just listening to what both of you said, that's that's another driving factor of why I started Pink STEM and why we've evolved. Because as I said, when we first started, we had all group all groups of girls. We would meet at our center in Henry County every Wednesday um, evening, and we would do uh, engineering activities, 3D printing, computer science coding, and we did that for about two or three years. But then I noticed I. I wanted to make more of an impact and I wanted to know how could I duplicate myself, especially, you know, during the pandemic, we had more time to think. And that mm-hmm. was when I started to work more with organizations and I can mm-hmm. train so they can go okay. out and train others. And I'm glad that you said that about, because I taught honor students for several years versus they have general um, study students and then yes. honors and there's a huge gap. Mm-hmm. And so my child my oldest child is 16 and i consider her a bubble student and what we call bubble students is they're right at the cusp of honors or they're right in general studies but on the cusp of honors but if Mm -hmm. they get just that amount of knowledge they can Mm -hmm. burst out of that bubble to the next level and a lot of teachers have a difficult time focusing on that bubble student because they're hard to identify right and so I'm kind of an advocate for that bubble student. And that's why organizations like Pink STEM and some of my partners that I work with, we work with those bubble students to kind of, you know, bring it out of them. And so maybe they can talk to their teacher and, and let them know, hey, can I join this club? Like we did robotics clubs, things like that. And and to boost up their skills as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Correct. You know, Correct. I, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, because what? I was going to say, because um, when I was the robotics coach, uh, there were maybe two or three girls and maybe one or two minorities. So it was very rarely we would find a girl minority that would join our robotics clubs. And um, that's how I knew it, it's, it's, it's not difficult concepts. It's fun. Mm-hmm. And robotics is not just about the computer coding or building the robots. You have to have someone that has a great personality that can um share it to the masses you have to have marketing you have to have website and that's what i wanted to share that there's so many careers that we're not tapping into because of the negative i guess oversight that we think that that it has yeah. but it doesn't yeah I, yeah I, I, go ahead Kat. no yeah i just i just i'm so empathetic to the fact that i feel like we lose so many young people mm-hmm. like you said i'm glad you started at k pre-K, K through 12, because, I mean, you want to get them as early as possible. And it's such a challenge for our educators who are overworked. Yes. So, you know, you have more than 30 kids to a classroom in high school and and and, and in all the levels, elementary through middle school, they're just overworked. And it's very difficult for them to identify, as you said, the, the bubble student. Mm-hmm. What can we do on our end as parents and community members to support our schools and ultimately our children so that they can get in front of your your organization, Pink STEM and the like, so that they can have that support system to kind of get out of that bubble and go forward? Because, I, you know, I, I hate to see it's so many talented people that really don't have that experience, that exposure or that support system to get to. And they're getting system. lost. Right. So right. my recommendation is, and I um, I work with my current parents with this as well, is to create a calendar at the beginning of the school year. And I would like for parents to set a time where they come in for an initial conference to meet the child's teacher. So the parent has to set eyes on each teacher and then the parent do a follow up email. And then I ask parents to do a midway before testing or before the end of the first semester to come in and either sit in their child's classroom or to do an email if their time does not permit them to come sit in the classroom. But for them to do a checkpoint midway through the semester on how can I support? What is my child um, missing? I see that my child's grade, um, she did not do well, or he he or she did not do well on this activity. Uh, What can I do as a parent for my child to um, do better for the next? So, and then at the end, before the grading period is done for that first semester, the child's parent is already familiar with the teacher. The teacher is also familiar with the parent and it's easier for them to communicate, to help each other, 
and it's and it's better for everyone when you have a good relationship with your child's parent with the um your child's parent absolutely you. rather than waiting until something has happened and then yeah. the first time you're talking to the teachers when your child is either failing or there's been some issue in the classroom isn't that's that a right. trip too because you know when you work at your job right if your boss give you a bad review that should not be the first time you heard it right it so not. why is it that we act surprised when our kids are flunking you this ain't the first time you should have been aware that something's been going on i remember talking to a parent about um her child mm -hmm. and it was a child who was in gwinnett county schools mm -hmm. and i said and she she was she was lamenting to me that she didn't know until like right before um the end of the year or the end of the semester that her child was failing like several classes and i said not several <laughs> yeah. I said, you, you weren't checking into into the parent portal right right just oh i don't know how to do that thing right ma'am right. so right. Winnet county at every school has a kiosk set up in the parent center and they will help you create a login if you don't know how to log in somebody will actually walk you through the process and it doesn't get any easier than that it doesn't get any it doesn't get any easier than that and if you don't have a computer at home you can you do the parent portal on your phone or you can go to the library yeah. But mostly you know, everybody has a smartphone. But I was like, how do you, how, so how do you get to the end of the semester and not know your child is not passing? Now me on any given day, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm logging in. Hey, what happened to this? Right. Uh, That's right. Uh, That's why, why, are you missing, why are you missing two, two, um, two geometry Look, assignments? What's and, going on? And why are you late to class? You can see everything. There you go. You can see everything. Why were you late That's to right. class? I know you were yes. on the bus. Well, I know and, why mine is late. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, sometimes mine is late because of me. But but then, and, and see, like my 16-year-old, she'll text me, hey, mom, before it even comes up on your phone, um, I have right, to do right. this. <laughs> like, she'll try to give me a prelude before. It comes right, right. But um, I can say, you know, as a busy parent myself, um, we're all busy we all have a lot to do absolutely and it's so easy to lose sight of what your child is doing in school because you think oh they're okay their teachers are taking care of them that's their job my child is fine that is why i say for parents like myself who need that, to have that's right, home, that's that's right. right. i can't you fool with that one right there that girl you grabbed her phone you, you don't have to go to the school this right here that's email right. the teacher some That's some great. teachers in some grades they use apps and you mm. can you, you know where you don't have their phone number but and some teachers even have their cell numbers on their <laughs> syllabus so mm -hmm. this, this yeah we got to bring back the we got to bring back the commitment to pull up mm. from busy yes and get back to being connected as a family and yes. i hate to keep bringing up COVID, but when we were forced to be at home we were forced, some of us took advantage of that to go to parks and reconnect with our families, read more and do stuff like that. But we got to yeah. find a way because people are so bogged down with working two or three jobs and you're just hoping that that child is doing okay. I guess as long as they're not getting suspension and detention mm -hmm. and getting in trouble, you don't say anything. But those good kids that aren't getting in trouble, that are not getting positive attention can slowly slip yeah. into the negativity because most people want attention whether it's good or bad you're getting attention right. so you know we need to promote what you're doing dr uh dr t so <laughs> that we can help get our communities involved so we can get support how can people reach you so they can reach out to you and can do you take volunteers or other you know oh, georgia yes. tech alumni to come in <laughs> yes so i can't help uh, her at all with engineering <laughs> <laughs> but you can help us with your presence as as an attorney because some of our young young women aspire to be an attorney so there's so much you can do uh what we like to do is we like to post on our social media uh, we do post on facebook mainly instagram sometimes and linkedin i'm working on myself uh because i have not given my social media to someone is mainly me 
and uh -oh. I delegate, delegate. <laughs> it is so difficult to actually do and to post at the same time because when you're in the trenches it doing it, it is so difficult to show everybody what you're doing because you're doing it. So um, I do need to delegate, but um, yes, that social media is the best way for me uh, um, to for anyone to see if there's an event coming up and they would like to volunteer. They can let us know. We do call to actions if we need if, if we need sponsors if we need volunteers. We'll post that for people to come out and support us. And so, what are, what are your social media handles? Uh, yes, on Facebook is Pink Stem Inc. And on um, Instagram is pink S period T period E period M period. It's kind of long. Say it again. Say, say the IG handle again. It's pink S period T period E period M period. Okay. And on um, LinkedIn, I'm just Tamika Rayhead. All right. Got to let our viewers know, girl, so people can get in contact with you, support you, send their kids your way. And, you know, listen, yeah. do you have anything for parents? Because I'm not even going to lie. When my son will come home with something, I'm turning the paper upside. I'm like, how? what? Yeah. You know, I'm, I didn't get that kind of math. Look, that's not, I don't know. This is yeah. that new math, you know. It, so it is new math. <laughs> yeah. It is a new math. And, and, and I, you are correct. The math is not the same of, like, the math ain't mathing like it used to. <laughs> now yeah. they, have, they have certain ways that they do math that, you know, mm -hmm. compared to how we did it when we were growing up. Not um, logical. It, it is, I know, and but I understand the concept because teaching chemistry, when we get to like stoichiometry, where we have to focus on the algebraic parts of the formula, it mm -hmm. makes sense. So I understand why they changed it, but it's just difficult for us to change our minds because it worked the way we learned. We're That's like, right. all we understood it and it worked, but. It, yeah, I remember doing um, long division with one of my younger kids, mm -hmm. like second, third grade, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And the way that they do long division now is like, I, I literally could not understand it. And so <laughs> I, 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 I closed the book. <laughs> I don't know how to do this, but I know how to do this. I know right. how to do long division. I mastered that in second grade. Right. I, I'm going to show you how I know how to do it. You multiply, yes. you, you subtract, you come down, you put the next number. I can figure that out. And so I showed him how I did it in the teacher. So when we sent it back, I told the teacher, I was like, look, I tried the way that you're <laughs> right. I couldn't figure it out. She's like, well, right. okay, as long as you got the right answer. I said, okay, all right. But one, one of the teachers of one of my kids was like, oh, no, he has to know this process. Right. Correct, ma'am. For what? Correct. There are some teachers, and I can say this because we have students that we tutor that had that exact same type of math where you would have to pull out the tens, the ones, the hundreds. And, and it was so, it seemed like it was extra work to mm -hmm. me. But some oh teachers God. will not accept it unless it's in that format. And I, I have no explanation outside of I understand because when they get to the higher levels, it does make sense. But I mean, the old way still works for me. So I'm kind of biased. Uh oh, excuse me. Yeah, so I guess my middle, I guess my middle son, it did not click mm -hmm. that way, it did not click. And I could not show him. Because I didn't understand it. And I was like, I'm sorry, baby. Like, I'm doing my best. <laughs> right. I guess the only thing I could think of, but you you would know more than I, if um that concept, like we know what the answer will be, but if the concept is necessary as a building block to something else. And that's the reason why they have changed the standards. And um, I went to a meeting at the Georgia State Capitol, I think about uh, six months ago, and the um, superintendent of schools, um, Dr. Rich Richardson, he was letting us know that all new standards were coming out again. So yeah. now, <laughs> when new, my last couple of years in the classroom, I taught honors sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, which means I had to teach chemistry, physics, uh, earth science, and biology all in one day each day. Mm. And that was one of the most stressful jobs in my life, just switching my mm. brain and teaching these honor students. And I was pregnant on top of that. Wow. Both, years, 
both years, it was very difficult. But what I can say is now that the standards have changed again, now our teachers have to change activities. They have to change their mindset because okay. now there's new. So, so it's like our children have to come into new processes and everyone is kind of learning at the same time. The teachers right. have to relearn. The students have to learn this new concept. And all we can do is our best. But we have to work with what's given to us. Well, thank God for Dr. Tamika for staying on top of all of us. Hello. Okay. <laughs> because, baby, <laughs> this brain don't work like that. But girl, thank you for that. Thank um, you. How, how do you identify your students and where geographically are you pulling your students from? So we have a couple geographic locations based on um, our volunteers and our support systems. Okay. So we have our, since Robbins Air Force Base has a group of engineers here, we do have a group here in Warner Robbins, and we also have a group that is um, at Georgia Tech that is based on our students, our college, and our engineers that are there at Georgia Tech. Uh, we also work with Clayton County students and Henry mm -hmm. County students. Okay. Now, since you're down in, in Warner Robbins, have you reached out to Fort Valley at all? Girl, you know, I'm trying to connect. I know. And I was thinking, like, what about George? Oh, State? You're yes. Like, you're, you're like, do you know? I tried to connect them. Not. Yes. We love we love Fort Valley here. Um, Actually, Fort Valley has a um, CDEP program. Which yes. Is, um, yes. I'm trying, it was to, about I'm trying to get my youngest one to, to do that for next year. Well, 2014. Yeah. We definitely want your, um, your child to be. And when I tell you, that was one of the best programs that I've ever been a part of. I traveled to Las Vegas with them. We went to the mm -hmm. Hoover Dam and learned about electrical engineering at the Hoover Dam. We went to the Grand Canyon. We went and did robotics, rocketry. I mean, that's an immersive program that students of color, and there were other students as well, mm -hmm. really could benefit from. Um, and I can help you with that if you need some support um, there with um joining the CDEP program. Okay. Uh, so look, so he's he 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 wasn't he's not able to do the high school portion of it because you know we live here. Okay. But you know we he's gonna try to do well I've been talking to him about <laughs> I've been talking to him about, you know, the dual program, the dual degree mm -hmm. program through CDEP where he can do the, the two degrees in five years. And he's really interested in that. And he just he's a smidget right now. He's a smidget below. It requires a three five. So he's right up under that three five. So we're hoping by the end of first semester, senior year. Right. He'll, he'll be, be where he needs to be. Yes. Let's yes. say all them acronyms y'all just said. Oh, CDEP, so Cooperative Development Energy Program. Energy Program, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I remembered that one. Oh, and also 4-H, um, Dr. Woody, um, he really, he helps us with our K-12 through initiative. Okay. Um, so we have 4-H curriculum here at our center, and we can pull, we have computer coding projects, um, healthy you learning about the safety and taking the care of our well-being of our bodies. There's so mm. much curriculum we have from 4-H that we partner with them and that's based out of um, Fort Valley University as well. Okay. Okay. That's real good. Yeah. And you get them talking about their body? Yes. Um, so 4-H um, has the holistic approach. So it mm -hmm. talks about like um, taking care of our bodies as far as like I was looking at curriculum today. Um, a student will have to breathe out of a slim straw versus oh. a larger straw to show like smoking effects on your lungs things mm -hmm. like that. The LPD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. I love it. That's well, good. Well, that's that's stepping into my little space. <laughs> I heard you Exercise say that. Science. Yeah, I was a respiratory therapist in the military, so you know that's yeah. all that gets me excited. Yeah. <laughs> that was my second job. I was an air traffic controller and a respiratory therapist. So, I, I read I, your bio. I was like, like, this lady done had five jobs. Oh, five I've years. tried yeah. them all. <laughs> I used to do <laughs> ground traffic. Mm. Ground traffic. Yes. Yes. Airfield, yes. girl. Yeah. Yes. So you know so exactly what it's about. Tell us a little bit about your background, because um, because our listeners need to know about the rich and varied 
careers that yep. you had and the path that led you to pink stem dr t bad honey look oh y'all y'all just making my day uh, <laughs> uh well i i started off in well okay backing up to high school i took the asvab and i scored well for air traffic control and i didn't know much about it and so one of my um friends he was a black pilot he was actually at the time, the youngest black pilot to get his pilot's license because he went to Canada. Mm. He took okay. me to the control, to control tower. His name is Jamel. And he showed me what an air traffic controller does. So there's that mentorship piece. Mm. And when I saw it for myself, I was like, I scored high enough on my scores to do this. <laughs> and then they told me, you'll get a $7,000 bonus if you sign. Sign me up. Wow. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> So I didn't know what I was getting myself into. It was stressful. I cried almost every night. Oh, wow. I felt like my peers were surpassing me. It was so much knowledge because you have to take all these concepts of physics. Um, you have to be able to see it, hear it, and you have to react. And it's real world and people's lives are in your hands. And it was so difficult for me. But I had not, not only my mom, but I had mentors that would talk to me and they would say, hey, you got this, just keep going. And that was what got me through. And then I came to a point where I said, okay, I've had enough stress. I want to do something a little different. And that was when I, um, I've always wanted to do medical. And that was when they told me I would qualify for cardiopulmonary, which is mm -hmm. respiratory is one of the um, fields that you can take. Hmm. And when I can tell you the joy of working with people, you not only work with children, but you work with geriatric end of care is it's such a good feeling to know that you're actually there for someone. Not everyone has family that comes to the That's hospital. Right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it was our job to go sit in the ICU. If we didn't have anything else to do, we've done our rounds. We would go sit with our patients, talk mm -hmm. to them, know them. Um, some of them would be there through the holidays with our families and, that was when I knew that nurturing was something I really wanted to do. And when it came time for me to leave the military, I thought that teaching would be easier. <laughs> and it, it, I don't know if easier was the best word for that, but um, that was why I chose teaching. And then going into teaching, I, I did that for as long as I could because there's so much. I tip my hat to every teacher. Teachers Absolutely. love our educators. Yes. So much. Count. You're a counselor. You're mm -hmm. sometimes a parent. Sometimes you have to comb that child's hair so they won't get picked on in class. Mm -hmm. It's it's so much as a teacher, and you have to educate them. Let's not forget that. So, yeah. and you know, some children come from uh, situations that a, a child should not be exposed to. Yeah. Right. And you know, and as an adult, and sometimes we're the only positive adult they see. Sometimes we have to carry the weight and the burden mm -hmm. of, you know, taking care of them. So mm -hmm. I, I've, I've definitely had some stories and I've definitely appreciated each moment of it. But what I do now, because I feel like I'm, I'm sharing my gift to more people, I feel like yeah. I'm in a better space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And we appreciate you for all that you do, Dr. Tiffany yes. Corbett. Amen. Really, really Thank do. you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, girl. I'm so glad to see your behind on this. <laughs> okay, oh, oh, you know, Miss Cat, she said, hey, Tamika. <laughs> she said, I see Pink Stem, and I have a podcast with an attorney, Karen, and you're going to love her. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> I like her, too. <laughs> yes, and, and then when she said it, I, and you know, all, we always have good intentions. And I sent her a message right then and there because I've learned that as an entrepreneur, I have so much coming at me that I mm -hmm. forget. So I have to send a message right then to let that person know, hey, I'm here whenever you need to talk to me. And Miss Kat said the next day, she was like, Tamika. <laughs> <laughs> when we got to speaking, we had more in common than I even thought that we had. And yeah. um, just it's just you know thank you Miss Cat for reaching out to me and thank you oh. Miss um, Karen for your time I really appreciate oh. this because more people have to we all have a story and it's good to share it so hopefully someone can get inspired or um, especially with entrepreneurship because now that's a big 
you know, yeah, yeah, key thing. And um, what I've taken with my workforce development, I now work on government contracting, and I try to bring more minorities into mm -hmm. government contracting, mm -hmm. um, like attorneys. Like you know, there's there's just is not as many government mm -hmm. contractors that are of color. Color, so they have like programs that can help you be ahead, set aside. So mm -hmm. um, I just want to take my knowledge and share it, and right. hopefully the legacy will live beyond me and it will that's continue right. after me. Um, that's but that's my goal. Yeah. Amen. Right. I just was saying we we are standing on the shoulders of others, yes, and I pray right. that the work that we're doing is widening that platform so others can stand on our shoulders too because that's yeah. what it's all about that's why we're very intentional with this space yeah and we want to make sure we continue to bring folks in this space that are aligned and like we meet so many strange people but like you said yeah. we're all connected because we're really trying to do a, a good deed beyond ourselves it's selfless but it it, and it feels good when we do the work that we're doing you know yeah. that's our reward it, it is our reward and sometimes like i don't get the financial reward all the time. And that's when you go back and think about like all the hard work I do, um, I, I don't get the financial reward, but if I've moved the needle to help someone come up to not have a path as difficult as I had, that's right. You can't put a price tag on that. Yeah, <laughs> you, can't, you cannot put a price like, tag on that. We have not made any money off this podcast. We've spent right. money to produce this podcast. Right. We've gone, you know, we've gone to restaurants um, when we first started. Yes. You know, we were buying food, and and even when we were doing it at at in my office, we were ordering food from mm -hmm. businesses. Yes. So we yes. we've spent money um, yes. to do what we do, and we do that, you know, and that's not begrudgingly. We do it because we want to do yes, it, we and we're talking to people who we want to get information out there. That's our whole purpose mm -hmm. for doing this podcast is getting information out there. So if, if, if but one person listens and says, oh, I need to call Tamika Ray Head yes. you know, so I can get my daughter into this program. Or I can get my son into this program. That's our purpose. Amen. That's our purpose. That's our Amen. purpose. And, and you, you know, it's, it's, it's all about connections and who you know. I, I, I share that with everyone. And um, I may cannot help someone, but I most likely know someone who can. Yeah. And so I try to make connections as much as possible because I don't know what they've already gone through and they may just need that one step to make it to the next level. Mm -hmm. So that, that, is, that is what we're here for. And I appreciate what you all are doing. I really do just being able to share my platform because I'm really sometimes the person in the back that doesn't say much. So this is helping me get out and get out front. Mm -hmm. you know, yes, get out front. So I really appreciate this. You and are very man. welcome. And for those of you who are listening and you want to get in contact with Dr. Tamika Ray Head, um, you can reach her via email at thead at pinkstem inc dot com. You can also reach her on her webpage at pinkstem.org. You can reach her on IG at pink s dot t dot e dot m dot and at Facebook pinkstem dot ink. I'm sorry, pinkstem ink. Is that right? Mm -hmm. All right. So Go ahead. Dr. Tamika, once again, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Conversations with Karen and Kat. Well, we are impacting the world one conversation at a time.